So I was thinking about making a game in a new game engine, mainly because I was bored, but also because I love learning new stuff. Now the engine I chose is Default, which some of you might know since it's actually been around for a while now. It's a free and cross-platform game engine that I believe is source available and that is all I know about it. Actually, there is one more thing I know about it and that is it uses Lua as a programming language. So let's jump in the engine without further ado. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm gonna call this my first game, I guess. Now I'm definitely choosing the empty project here since I want to explore the engine by myself and I'm gonna do my best to stay away from tutorials as much as I can. And after I opened my project I was greeted with a readme file that welcomed me to default which was very nice of them. Okay, but how do you get a viewport? You know, where you make your game stuff, like a level editor of some sort maybe? So far I can see a lot of files here. We also have a dot collection file, which does appear to be a level editor. So why don't we try to drag in something? Okay, maybe not the readme file. Now there are some default PNG files here, but I don't think you can just drag them in. Okay, I think I got this figured. You make a game object under the collection. And what that gives you is the standard stuff like position, rotation, scale, and stuff like that. And then shockingly, I found out you can add components under game objects. Like for example, I can add this camera as a component. And now we have a camera in our collection. You can also move around by holding down the Alt key and look around with control. Now, this being my first time making a game in this engine, I didn't quite want to make a 3D game yet. So apparently, you don't necessarily need a camera in a 2D game. Well, at least in my 2D game. So to make things simpler for myself, I'm gonna delete the camera and also change the screen resolution to something reasonable in the project settings. And then after that, I made some sprites in GIMP to use it with the game that I was gonna make. And I could use the sprite component to display the PNG files. So I made a folder for all of my sprites and dragged them in. Now I thought you could just drop the PNGs on the sprite and that should be it. But apparently default uses atlases which can bake a bunch of images into one single large image. And that's apparently good for performance and memory reasons. So basically I had to create an atlas now to put all of my images in there. Now let me know in the comment section if there is a way to use images directly. So on the atlas itself I added all of my four images assuming that I can use them separately later. What's also cool about this is that you can add animation groups, that is if your sprite has animation. For example in their RPG map sample you can add the sprites to the atlas and then make an animation group for each animation you want. Which I kind of found useful. And if you want tiling you can use tile sources and tile maps. But in this project I'm not touching those. So this is what I have so far in my collection. There's a platform with a collision object component on it. And a box as a shape under it. Now I'm doing the same thing for my walls but they use a different image for their sprites. And then we have this GUI thing here that kind of gives us a frame just to let us know what we're doing. So I'm kind of doing the same thing for the ball. Instead, I'm tweaking the collision object settings to make it more bouncy so it doesn't lose energy when it hits something. But now the ball is falling super slowly. And so to fix that, I thought of just removing the gravity and instead adding a force to the ball through scripting. And so now we can see the ball isn't moving at all, which means it's scripting time. Creating a script was actually quite simple. You just make your script file and then the way you attach it to your game object is by attaching it as a component. And so I deleted all of the functions that I didn't need in the default script. And just like that, I was ready to write my first Lua script. 
Now, programmers know how it feels to write your first code in a language and have it run without any errors no matter how simple it is. So yeah, let's leave it at that. After reading the manuals in the default website, I figured out that you can use the GO property to get access to the game object and you can use the set and get functions to adjust the properties for the components. And here you can see that I'm creating a local variable and this is going to store the direction that we're going to apply a force to the ball. And then we want to use the set function. Now the first argument is going to be the URL which you can find by going to the properties panel of your component. Now the second argument is going to be the linear velocity because that's what we want to set. And for the last argument we just want to pass the variable that we made. Now let's run this and there we go. I think it was loading the script for the first time but as you can see we have the ball moving. Now here I've opened one of their tutorial projects to explore around a bit and I figured out that they were using a collision object with the type of kinematic for their player and in the script they were directly changing the position of the player using the set position function. So back in my project I went ahead and created a new script for my platform and deleted the functions that I didn't really need and so this is basically what we're left with. And then after that I went ahead and added some key triggers in the input bindings to control the platform with. Now here I'm defining a variable that is going to store the state of our input and in the unInput function we are checking for the input and then assigning it accordingly. And then on update we are getting the current position of the player and storing it on a local variable and then adding or subtracting from it depending on our input. And finally we want to set its position. Now back in their tutorial project we can see they have a msg.post function here which is apparently necessary if you want to capture the input of the player in the script. Now after running the game I got an error. So basically I was trying to add a vector 3 to a float which was not going to happen so I decided to do the calculation only for the x part since that's the only movement I need. And after I ran that I figured out that my platform was kind of moving slow so I tried increasing the speed a little bit but it was still moving slow. So then I tried to increase it even further and it was actually fine this time. But then you see the problem was my platform was going through the walls even though they both had colliders. Now apparently if you use a kinematic collision object you need to resolve the collisions yourself. So after implementing their method I couldn't go through the walls anymore but the ball could push me over. Now I fixed this by modifying their code to work for my specific game. Also I increased the speed of the ball by changing the scale value in the physics settings and now the game was working perfectly fine. Now it did take some time to get used to the engine but it gets pretty simple once you know how things work. It definitely felt unique in a lot of ways. So what did you think about this game engine? Tell me in the comment section. Also thanks to everyone for watching till the end and as always I'll see you guys soon.